You are listening to Book Clips, a mini podcast in which authors or narrators do readings from novels. Check out the show notes for the synopsis and buy links for this book. This is Jody Hutchins reading a passage from my second novel, Grimmer Intentions, book two in my paranormal romance series, Tales from the Grim. A gentle breeze caressed her face, soft and rippling like the ocean that lay beyond the sandy beach. The sand nearly scorched the bare soles of her feet, and the sun poured warmth over her back. Glancing up, Jackie took in the otherworldly hues of the sky, visible brushstrokes lining the silver clouds. A lucid dream, she realized. Months had passed since she'd experienced one, and the revelation along with the strange recent events in her life left her with a deep foreboding. Glossy water licked the shore, spilling over the sand before receding back. She'd been to the stream beach before nestling herself under the ever-present warmth from the sun and enjoying the calm. Meditation brought her to the same place. Serenity. Peace. Tranquility. These qualities kept bringing her back to the only place she could find her balance. She was free from the physical stressors of keeping her beast at bay, holding back the bloodlusts associated with her being and splitting her two lives apart. Nothing bad would come of her in her safe place and she didn't have to veil herself in a disguise depending upon who she was around. A murder of crows flew overhead before dipping into the ocean. With each wave, they bobbed along with the oddly colored water. Streams of dark blue swirled with gray, dappled with white brushstrokes. The painted landscape elicited a smile from Jackie, and she continued her walk down the beach. Puffy white clouds obscured the tangerine-tinged sun, causing thick rays to shimmer over the sand. Oh, how she wanted to paint the scene in front of her, to capture the elegance of the orange glazed sand or the crows afloat on the water's surface. Light flickered in her line of sight, and she yanked her gaze from the bobbing blackbirds to the assaulting ray. Jackie squinted to see where the glint had originated from. None other than Margot the Grim lounged against an overturned lifeguard stand, shaving a piece of driftwood with a thick pocket knife. The sun reflected on the metal surface and shone into Jackie's eyes again as she started towards the enigmatic woman. The scenario was very similar to when the two women met for the first time in Brent's home. Margot's lip ring had caught a glimmer of light, shining directly in Jackie's eyes. Shortly after that, Margot had accidentally called her a vampire, and upon Jackie correcting her, Margot's response had been rude, leading Jackie to kick her in the leg. She assumed this is where her subconscious conjured the action from. But this is different. Jackie thought. She'd dreamt of people before, but she couldn't recall the last time she'd brought someone within her place of serenity. Of course, Margot was Jackie's own doing, her own mental depiction of the Grimm, dressed in red flannel pajamas, not that Jackie could ever imagine Margot wearing such an outfit to bed. Margot appeared so out of place, but completely where she belonged. Hi, Jackie said as she stopped next to the lifeguard stand. Margot looked up and smiled wide. Well, isn't this fucking weird? Her cerulean gaze was the strangest color Jackie had the pleasure to see. Margot's eyes reminded her of a precious stone she found at the beach one day, the vibrant azure kyanite calling to her from beneath the tawny sand. She still had the rock, tucked away in the tiny tin box beside her pillow, along with a few other gems. However, a fire shifted a light within the woman's eyes, casting flames in the irises, something Jackie had never witnessed before meeting Margot. Whimsical. The last word Jackie would ever associate with the woman sitting on the ground had become the only descriptor relatively close to defining Margot in that moment. Sit with me, Margot offered, scooting over. Jackie settled beside Margot, who lifted her arm and wrapped it around Jackie. Surprisingly, she found the contact incredibly comforting, and she nestled into Margot's side. This was definitely new. There's something to be said about the beauty of a crow's shadow, Margot muttered, her voice far off. Jackie smiled. What does that mean? Turning to face her, Margot offered her a crooked smirk. I don't know, but it sounded good, didn't it? Makes about as much sense as me being here. I feel like I stepped into one of your paintings. The blackbird hopped over, tilting its head to gaze up at Jackie. She held out her hand, and the creature jumped onto the presented palm with a flutter of their wings. I have to admit, I love crows. I think my background is to blame for that. Pretty sure all good and Pusa have to love black cats and crows. Margot chuckled. I think that's a prerequisite, yeah? The crow fluttered away. 
Sighing, Jackie relaxed against Margot, placing her hand on Margot's thigh, surprised when warmth spread through her from their contact. Usually when I have these dreams, I'm the only cognitive individual. I mean, besides the occasional talking animal. Why are you here? Jackie didn't expect an answer, because she didn't know why Margot was there. Obviously, the woman beside her wasn't really Margot, not in her dreams. The woman next to her was nothing but a figment of her own imagination, no matter how her subconscious rendered the real Margot. I don't know. Margot averted her gaze. I wanted to be with you. With me? Margot blinked, her lower lip disappearing between her teeth. Yeah, I, I don't know what any of this means. Fuck, maybe I'm having an existential crisis. Margot laughed loudly to her own inside joke that Jackie didn't get. There's just something about you, and I can't figure out what it is. I don't think it's only because of the whole bitey thing, which is amazing, by the way. She smirked, cupping her hand under Jackie's jawline. You're incredible. Jackie flung her hair over her shoulder. You're just addicted to me. Sincerity passed Margot's face. Yeah, I think I am. I wanted to text you, but thought that would have been too weird. She smirked. Not that this is any less weird, she said, glancing around at the painted seascape in front of them. Jackie also gazed out at the water, lapping at the shoreline, noting the soft brushstrokes of white foam lingering on the water's edge, the textured grains of sand at her feet. The calming rush of the ocean lulled Jackie into a comfort, one she sought when she came to the spot to be alone, to meditate. To share the intimate location with anyone besides the occasional talking animal was something she wasn't accustomed to. Jackie. She turned to Margot again. Yeah? We can't be a couple. A painful pang drenched Jackie's brief serenity. What are you talking about? Margot frowned, her expression uncomfortable. I have to leave. Well, I might have to leave the country. Why? Leaning forward, Margot wrapped her arms around her knees, bunching up her pajama pants. Jackie never imagined witnessing fear on Margot's features, but she couldn't deny the dread marring her expression. I can't tell you, but I have to leave America. There's so much going on with corporate, and leaving might be my best option for everyone's sake. You have to leave here? Jackie whispered. No, she rationalized. This all stemmed from the talk she had with Ezra, the conversation about weird things happening with the Grimm. Jackie shook her head, as if to shoo away the weird dream. It didn't work. Margot peered at the textured sky as a cotton candy cloud drifted by, her face pensive. Yeah. Maybe. Probably. She lowered her head and looked at Jackie. If it comes down to it, I won't have a choice, Jackie. Yes, you do. There's always a choice. Why can't you just stay? Seriously, you have no idea. That's not your fault. It's mine. She paused, shaking her head, then parting her lips as if to speak again, but glanced down at her hands instead. Firelight twinkled in her eyes before she vanished from Jackie's dream completely, a vapor of mist left in her wake. A chill crept into Jackie's being, and she wrapped her own arms around herself as the cloud where Margot sat dissipated. I have some sick sense of creativity, she said to the crows meandering in the sand a few feet from her. One of them bobbed its head at her and winked a black button eye. Well, I couldn't cur, the crow rasped. Jackie withdrew her flip-flop from her right foot and threw it at the crow, rolling her eyes as she forced herself to wake up. This is Jody Hutchins, and you've been listening to a passage from my second novel, Grimmer Intentions, book two in my paranormal romance series, Tales from the Grim. Thanks for listening. You have been listening to Book Clips. Check out the show notes for the synopsis and buy links for this book. If you are interested in showcasing your novel, then check out the show notes for more information.